Hey guys, welcome back. It's going to be a bit of a different one today. Today we're going to go over kind of how I did this like a large set with multiple different animations all in the same kind of blender file. So I've been working with making this kind of set of animation kind of seeing playthrough right now, right? So I noticed that uh, there were some kind of workflow things that I realized I kind of learned as I was making it. So I wanted to make a scene that was based off of the severance set that we kind of see right here, right? So something kind of like this. I wanted to kind of have it uh, get the, the desks and kind of have this kind of like large empty space in the room. I think the biggest thing I learned working on this was working on it in modules. So if we're kind of looking at the, the set here and kind of thinking about it, we have essentially everything done in different little kind of like one by one cubes. And so each tile is kind of that, right? And each kind of area of the, of the space. So. What I was able to do was do a lot of this through kind of simple, just kind of really subdiv surface modeling, and then just doing a lot of it with just kind of arraying things correctly. Let's just look at one piece starting off. So I started off just with essentially the ceiling tiles, and I realized I can array them really easily. So what I did was just two arrays off of one individual asset. So here we go, perfect. So I just pushed slash on the number key to get only this in view. If you tab in, it's just one thing so looking at the the view i guess it was a two by two cube so i kind of made a, a two by two cube kind of the main unit of measure as i was kind of making everything i just arrayed it out five by five and it by doing um the merging on the array you're able to make sure you have it uh kind of seamlessly wrapped so if i turn off the merges you're going to see them look like individual tiles versus one seamless thing which i think is kind of cool so that's how I did that. Then for the walls, it's the same idea. But rather than a two by two cube, I just did a two meter kind of slice right there, and move it through. And again, it's just super simple subdiv modeling. The inside of this, uh, I then started moving on to the desk. And the desk was the more important thing, but I took a bit more time. So then for the desk, I basically just made a bunch of different things and set the scene. The, the big thing I made sure to do was to chunk it out into different steps. Then, so here, I basically did a normal sub subdiv surface modeling system. And then for the bottom of the chair, I modeled one leg and then used the GeoNode system to kind of instance it out. For the keyboard, it was really quite straightforward. I pretty much made one little key and literally just made an array system and duplicated it and kind of changed those different shapes. And I just copied the reference. Uh, did a bit of subdiv modeling off of the computer. The big difference here is I used a mirror modifier to make sure it was all going to be symmetrical and then just kind of merge it all together at the very end. And then for the lamp, I was quite lazy. I did a geonode system to make sure that that way this uh, kind of like wire thing would stay consistent, similar to my kind of chain tutorial. Um, so it's the same exact kind of logic where you just have the resampled curve on a set uh, distance kind of resampling and it'll instance do points along the curve. And I also then parented the ends of the curve with some hook modifiers on here. So I think if we can look in, we can see the hooks right here. So there's a hook, there's a hook here. And then I just kind of moved through and did all of that. And what was nice is the way to do the rest of the scene of the, the, the desk right here like this. The way I did this desk is I just did a, a geonode system as well. I did a cubicle instance and then just did a lot of different transforms to make sure it can move perfectly around the center point then instance it around four times. The center console of the desk right here, it was made in GeoNode as well. So I just did a little extrusions and pulled it in. So if you look at, look at this, this is the, the center console, right? We can kind of see how we're doing this. Kind of instance, instance it four times. And then from here, I was just transforming the center console to make it and pulled it all together. Uh, so that was kind of how I did this main scene we're seeing right there. Now that I had all of the elements kind of made, then I was able to kind of use the same scene multiple times to kind of change different camera movements to kind of have the animation play. So I did a various different ways of parenting the camera. I took the camera and I added some constraints just following the path and tracking too. And I was able to kind of make these different scenes. And then I went through and just did multiple scenes, same exact thing, different camera, different settings. And the way I kind of made these same faraway shots is I literally just re like uh, duplicated the scenes a bunch of times and just changed what was inside of it. and did really simple kind of animations with the assets I already had made to kind of set the scene. That way I can essentially maximize the amount of like value the assets are giving me with limiting the amount of work. You add a lot of blur and depth of field to kind of cover up everything to make it look easy and consistent. This one was a bit more clever, I would say. I did a for each element 
in order to have it randomly instance the amount of monitors on each of the, the little like uh, server rack thingies. So this is where I was instancing it. So I have one rack I made, instance it a bunch of times, and then from here, basically a grid. Then for each of the points on the grid, I then had it randomly ascribe the points. So we can see for each of the grids, that it has a different set of probability for it. I also did a little nature scene. This one was a bit more different. So I just did geometry nodes to kind of make the ground and also uh, scatter a bunch of these kind of plants. So obviously if we do the rendered view, we're going to see a bunch more than we're seeing in the viewport. This is just to kind of speed up, speed it up in terms of like processing, uh, working with the scene. And the main trick I used here was just uh, this switch right here. So is viewport equal switch? If it's not the viewport, we're gonna have a density of one. And if it is, uh, we're gonna have a density of 20. And so this is basically making it so that only when we're rendering, then we're going to have the huge amount of uh, grass particles and it makes it way faster to kind of view everything. And then I used up above, I think I just did a noise texture on a subdivided mesh to kind of make this kind of rolling hills look. And I just messed with it until it looked okay. And then this is the collection of, I guess, grass particles. Uh, surprise, surprise. And then I had to resize all of them and made it a look a bit better. Uh, that's, that's what well, this is right here, resizing and moving them around. Uh, and then it's all joined together and we're good to go. And then for the sun, it literally was just a sphere that I made an emission object. And I did some little compositing magic to make it look a bit more, you know, sunny and a bit more bloomy. And then I guess the last ones we want to go over is I guess the AI slop ones. Was able to use the same uh, elements of the office. I just scaled it up because I was lazy. Didn't want to actually like work on it really hard. See the camera. I guess this probably should have been moved up a little bit, but that's okay. No one's actually going to notice anything. Uh, and then I, I rigged this little, this little mesh. So I pulled in this mesh and I rigged it and I uh, kind of used some just general displacement to open up the mouth and kind of move it. That way we're able to kind of have this uh, do a simple weight to form. And that was able to kind of rig it out. So I have the neck, a little root, and then two parts of the mesh to open up the mouth. And it works out pretty good. It was really quick, wasn't hard to do. And then for this, it's just some more geometry nodes with a proximity on the actual kind of like mouth area. And that will kind of do the scaling. So it makes it scale to zero. So it looks like they're kind of being eaten. One from the side, one from up above. Kept the same animation, made it easy. And the last one was kind of just an endless scrolling thing uh, using kind of the same set I made for this kind of AI slop. And the way I made it seamless was I made sure I just duplicated the actual set of geo nodes with multiple instances. So that way, as it finishes one set, it will move into the next one seamlessly. So again, it's literally just transform geometry. So I know I'm moving it by 10 meters. So I move it down by 10 meters. The animation is having it move through just 10 meters. And I control the movement with just a scene time, dividing it by one and scaling. And so it makes it really easy. See, here's the 10 meter movement. Here's the, the tau rotation, which is gonna be a full 360 on the rotation. And then we keep it random so it kind of moves, is moving through. And it's also a linear interpolation right here. So it makes it nice and easy. So to kind of go over it one more time, like what did I learn from this project? One, uh, the way I <laughs> was, keeping all my objects clean with the collections was bad. So what I would do in the future is I would clean up how I was naming things in collections to make it much more straightforward. I probably would separate things into light groups, objects, and different collections. Uh, and then two, I think the way I was doing some of the instancing extra objects into different scenes, I probably could have done one scene with all of it for, uh, I think, some of this right here. So the, the desk overhead spin, the overhead spin, and then the top down spin probably could have been, been the same scene, just two different cameras, but I was kind of lazy and, and copied it out. So I think I probably could have used multiple cameras inside the same scene to kind of make it cleaned up. I think the way I did the desk far away made it really easy and consistent by having it be multiple scenes of kind of the same exact camera placement, same exact camera focus helped it make it feel more cohesive as you kind of move between them. So that was a good learning I had there. Uh, and then the last thing I think I really learned was people aren't going to see everything. So don't spend too much time on like one individual asset. And then if you have to kind of have your like, like glamour uh, close up asset, then you can spend more time there. I think it was good that I kind of was able to learn how to make all of these different things kind of all together. 
And it was nice to kind of figure out a creative way to use geometry nodes inside of this scene as larger kind of like instanceable objects. I guess another thing is I would have probably moved all of this stuff we see right here farther away from the world origin. My world origin, I think, is like like right like here, right? Uh, so everything is kind of like centered around there, but it kind of ruins it as my little set is there. I think my set should be there and the world origin for all this stuff should have been moved like way over here or something. Uh, that would have been a nice learning. Uh, and then I think I wasted a bunch of time on making the, the carpet material like procedural and like perfect. Uh, no one's gonna see this. See, like, look at this. See, look how, how ridiculously complex this carpet material is for literally no reason. Uh, this was stupid. Pick your battles on what makes the most sense for uh, spending time on things. Hopefully you guys found this, this interesting. This was a bit more of kind of an everywhere overview versus a more kind of streamlined uh, video process. But I think it was good also to like push myself into doing a more complex project than what I was kind of used to. I definitely learned a lot and I'll be doing more of these uh, project breakdown videos in the future as I kind of make larger and larger scenes. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next month. Augury.